Yes guys, welcome back to another Fancy Football Fix YouTube video. My name is FPL Nacho and in this video we are going to be looking at a Game Week 5 wildcard draft. I know a few of you are considering it or potentially already activated it, so I've built a draft that I think long term really does offer value. And I'm also going to be looking at the predicted points between Game Weeks 5 and Game Weeks 10. So for those who are making transfers that are looking a bit more long term, these are the ones to target in each position. So as always, make sure you do drop a like on the video and of course smash that subscribe button on the channel and without further ado let's get into today's video Okay, so first off, I wanted to kick off with these predicted points over the next five game weeks. So I really do think it is relevant to a lot of FPL managers out there. Now, if you're not looking to wildcard in game week five, I think a popular time to do so is going to be around game weeks nine, game weeks 10 after the second international break. So these are very relevant players between now and and that potential wildcard horizon. So first up, the goalkeeper department. I know a lot, of, a lot of you right now maybe sat there with Pickford and Nana, and you're maybe looking for that luxury goalkeeper transfer. So these are the top five transfers right now. Pope, fifth best with 25.3 predicted points, all the way up to Flecken, who is number one, with 27.3 predicted points. And if I was in the market for one goalkeeper right now, I probably would move towards Flecken. Now, Brentford in general are decent underlying numbers for clean sheets, expected goals conceded. But I think Flecken offers that perfect goalkeeper option of having saves, clean sheets and also bonus points. Hopefully we do see a rare 2.0 here. Now I know he had a poor preseason, but he started the season okay. And I think if you were in the market for a 4.5, based on the predicted points and what we've seen so far... I do think he is probably the go-to transfer in your teams. Leno is a good option as well, especially now that Polina has stayed at Fulham. Outside of that, I can't really justify spending 5.5 million on Allison, especially when I think Trent may emerge as an option in our teams later down the line. Now, a perfect segue here into the defenders, because you can see here, Trent Alexander-Arnold is top of the predicted points for the next five at 26.5 points. Looking like a brilliant option. Again, at 7.9, very difficult to shoehorn him in our teams. But it's worth noting, so many of us have money lying about in our teams. Now, maybe the time is to do so going into Trent Alexander-Arnold. And the one I also do like is Trippier at 6.5 million. Newcastle coming into a really good run of Premier League fixtures. Now, I know they started the season poorly, but we're expecting them to slightly improve now with the fixture run. But it's worth noting, Champions League on the horizon and we know Newcastle are going to have to play their best team week in, week out in the Champions League. Could that affect both Newcastle's performances and maybe the game time of someone like a Trippier now that they've signed Livramento? That is the question you're going to have to ask yourself. But I do think Trippier's minutes are pretty secure. Maybe the odd benching might happen in between some difficult Champions League fixtures. Otherwise, the other options are great. Robertson is 6.5 million. Cash looking really good, especially if he does play as a right winger in this Aston Villa team. And Fabian Schaar at 5 million if you want to spend a little bit less in that Newcastle defence. Moving into midfielders, similar faces that we always see. Mo Salah at top of the tree by miles at 37.3 predicted points and if you can go there in this game week I do think it is a really nice differential move knowing that a lot of managers are going to go for him in game week nine when the fixtures do become amazing but I think from now onwards the fixtures are actually quite good and you definitely could invest right now if you want to. Saka is still the pick of the bunch in the Arsenal midfielders at 31.8 predicted points but what I will say is I do think Martinelli even though he's been sold by a lot will emerge as an amazing option once again we saw that against Man United, him being the highest player in the team. I think a lot of us are going to regret selling Martinelli in a few game weeks. But again, I wouldn't sell him if you own him right now. And the two I quickly want to discuss, Madison and Son. Son has suddenly popped up on our predicted points. And now that he's playing as a number nine in this system, 27.7 predicted points. I do think he is worth the extra over Madison over this horizon. So if you can afford it and you don't have Madison right now, maybe try and shoehorn Son into your team's. Last up, the forwards, Haaland, don't need to discuss him. If you don't have him, you're a maniac. Isak at 26.3. I would argue that the fixtures for the Champions League have made it very difficult to predict Isak's minutes. We know Callum Wilson is easily a replacement for Isak in any Premier League game. Maybe Eddie Howe will view Isak as a Champions League player and Wilson as a Premier League player at times. That could be a worry. Watkins looking great long term. Solanke has been really under the radar. And Morris, because of the double game week in game week seven, has popped up at 25 predicted points. But 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments. A lot of these are going to be on my wildcard team, so this is definitely relevant, but I think for long-term transfers, you need to pick a few of these out of your options because they're great picks. And next up, we're going to move into my wildcard draft for game week five. I haven't activated it, but this is what it would kind of look like if I was to do so. So we have gone for the 3-5-2 formation. I still think that is the way to go. We have so many midfielders in the game that are offering unbelievable value. I just think it's impossible to go without five midfielders. So to kick off the goalkeeper department, based on the predicted points and based on what I've seen, Flecken is a great option at 4.5 million. Now, I have seen some people go for the Ariola matt Turner combination where you basically spend only 8 million on goalkeepers. That's definitely an option, but because not enough Forest has signed a new goalie, I don't know long term whether Turner is actually in competition with that new one. And I think we need to just go for a goalkeeper that we know is going to play week in, week out for a very good team. And I think Flecken is that man at 4.5 million. Brilliant value. And I can always feel confident with Brentford that if they aren't going to necessarily keep a clean sheet, they will rack up some low XG chances, which are easy save points for someone like Flecken. Now, moving into the defence of the starting three that we've gone for. I've gone for Trippier. Now, I'm less bullish than others on Trippier. I don't think Newcastle are necessarily in the best place right now. However, we have so much money to spend, and it's 6.5 million with Trippier. We know that he's on set pieces, he's a bonus point magnet, and Newcastle are good defensively. We're just not seeing that right now. Now, I am worried about the Champions League coming up, but until we actually see the rotation, I don't think we need to be worried about Trippier. So if you're building a wildcard, I think Trippier is a great entry point right now, knowing that you can just downgrade into any other option if you want to later down the line. Or he's an easy upgrade to Trent later down the line if you want to do so. Matty Cash at 4.6 just looks like great value. And if he does continue to play as a right winger, then it's a no-brainer at 4.6 million. And yes, Aston Villa have been a little bit ropey recently, but underlying numbers are okay. And the fixtures long-term are looking decent for them. So I think Cash is a great investment if you want to go down that. And your Dogie just looks an awesome option at Spurs. Spurs themselves are looking great. And he's looking like a real attacking asset in that side. And I don't think you need to overthink it. Spurs playing great. Your Dogie playing great. Go for him. It's 4.7 million. No one we can move away from him later down the line if we want to. Now, moving into the midfielders. And I've gone for a bit of a balance here of players that I think are just almost essential alongside players that are really nice differential. So first up in Buemo at 6.8 million. Don't think we need to overthink it. Fixtures are still really good for Brentford. He has 25.4 predicted points over the next five game weeks. He's on penalties. He's the talisman of that team, plays every minute. I don't think you need to overthink it. Have you missed the boat? Yes, for the early points, but I think the points are still going to come for him. <clears throat> and the same applies for Saka. 8.7 million on penalties, plays every minute for Arsenal. Now, as I said, I do think Martinelli will eventually be the better option from a value perspective. But right now, I think go for Saka is the wise move, knowing that you can downgrade to any of the other Arsenal options available later down the line. I don't think we need to overthink the Saka pick. And Rashford is going to be my Man United pick of choice. Now, I will touch on why in a minute. But as you can see, Son is in my team. And I feel like if you can go for the goal scorers in their respective teams, you just do so. And while I think Bruno Fernandes is a brilliant pick at 8.5 million, he's on penalties, and I do think a lot of things are going to flow th throw through Bruno Fernandes. I think Rashford, now that they got Hoyland in the team, Rashford's playing on his preferred side on the left. We are going to want to own Rashford longer term. And when you're seeing him racking up the goals, whereas Bruno Fernandes are getting the assists potentially, I think we're, we're going to regret not investing a little bit more in Rashford. Now, I touched on Son. As I said, I think Madison is an unbelievable pick. But I think with Son, you want to go for the goal scorer. And if he's going to continue playing as the number nine, it is almost impossible to ignore him if you don't currently have any Spurs players and you're on a wild card. Nine million for a guy who we know is so clinical in front of goal. And I think Spurs are creating so many chances right now. It's a no-brainer knowing that if he does suddenly pop off back onto the left wing, we could downgrade him to James Madison. I don't think James Madison has the explosive high ceiling that Son does offer. But again, we are judging it off one game week's worth of information. It is worth noting. And last up, Phil Foden. I don't think anyone else can really replicate what Phil Foden does in this Man City team. I know he didn't really get the big score in game week four compared to the likes of Haaland and Alvarez. But I'm still really bullish on Foden playing as that number 10 behind Erling Haaland. And at 7.6 million, I think he's a great investment into these Man City fixtures that look really, really good. Just remember, there is always pet roulette, which we do need to contend with. Now, 
Moving into the forwards, and yes, I have gone for an incredibly rogue pick in Erling Haaland. No, of course not. Haaland is the most obvious pick in the world, but Darwin Nunes has entered the team. Now, his predicted points are only 10.4, but please do kind of not really consider that because his minutes are so hard to predict. It does skew our predicted points going forward. If he was guaranteed 70 minutes, then those predicted points would definitely improve because his underlying numbers are so damn good. He was the only player last season to really keep up with Erling Haaland. And I really do think right now, now that Liverpool have got the technicians in midfield with Soboslai McAllister, I don't think they need someone like a Gakpo to drop into the number nine little pocket areas, collecting the ball. I think you need someone like Darwin Nunez who's going to stretch the game, cause problems. We saw that against Newcastle and we also saw it in game week four against Aston Villa. I think he's going to get a run of games and I know it's a bit of a punt, but while we can't necessarily afford Mo Salah in this team right now, I think we do need some sort of Liverpool investment. And I think 17 minutes of Darwin Nunes is actually my my preference rather than going for somebody like a Watkins or maybe even an Isak. I know it's a little bit controversial, but Darwin Nunes, I think, is the differential you might want in your teams. But I understand if you are a little bit worried about his minutes. And last up, the goalkeepers. Four million Areola is the pick of the goalies at that price point. Don't overthink it. Bring him in. West Ham looking good defensively this season. I've gone for Zinchenko at 4.9 million. I think he's probably the go-to Arsenal uh, defender right now. Not necessarily going to create loads, but I think he's a nice investment into that Arsenal defence. I think it's still going to continue to get clean sheets along the way. Gabriel can't really justify that because of the rotation risk. Saliba is a good alternative as well. But I've gone for Zinchenko, so I think he's really imperative to the way that Arsenal are going to continue playing. Kabore at 4 million, importantly doubles in game week 7. So you do have a double game week player there if you want to have him. I would recommend it just to have that coverage. And Cameron Archer, 4.5 million forward, 11.3 predicted points. And those will increase once his minutes do become guaranteed in that Sheffield United team. Obvious pick to have. Don't go from a bammer at West Ham. That is the man to own. So that is going to be my Game Week 5 wildcard draft, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I really like this team. I think it's got a good balance of the guaranteed players like Trippiers, Rashford, Sackers, but it's got the differentials that I think a lot of managers want to own but can't own, like Son, like even Darwin Nunes. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. And that just leaves you to say thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you do drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And we will see you in the next one. Take care. Cheers.